And then does your sense of self mm -hmm. fall away mm -hmm. or become... See, uh, 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 mm. uh, uh, I can say in this way, uh, sense of self did not fall away, became expanded. Ah. So whatever we call by the word self, that all those qualities disappeared and it became expanded. That's what has exactly happened. Because we hear these uh, admonitions in many spiritual mm -hmm. traditions mm -hmm. about dying to the self mm -hmm. or ego death, mm -hmm. even in the West. Ah, yes, maybe, uh, maybe you can say that uh, whatever I was thinking as myself has disappeared and whatever was real self has opened itself. That's what I'm <laughs> moving toward. So maybe a small mm -hmm. self disappeared yields to a <laughs> higher self. Maybe. <laughs> uh, expand itself. In the uh, Hindu religion, mm -hmm. is there a trinity? Is there a soul in the middle? Mm -hmm. Or is it simply uh, God and man? Uh, you see, uh, in Hinduism, there are different levels of uh, uh, teachings for a different levels of people. We have uh, something called Visishtadvaita. And Dvaita, we have a dual, dual philosophy. Duality means you and God exist. And there, are, there is another one philosophy, you, God, and world. The, uh, all three are separate. If you uh, expand yourself, you can experience God and world inside you. And there is another one tradition, there is neither world nor God apart from, away from your being. So in India, in Hinduism, we don't have a single one set of belief. It's like we give different levels of teachings. Person can progress step by step and achieve the ultimate. So, it's like a, what I experienced in my uh, life itself. There is no world or God apart from your very being and very consciousness. To come to that realization, you may have to go through other beliefs, other systems, a step by step. But ultimately, I feel this is the experience. You're listening to Intervision on KPFK. My name is Michael Benner, and uh, we're really honored, uh, as you can probably tell, having a great time here with Master Paramahansa Nityananda. Your students and devotees call you Swamiji. Yes. May I? Yes, yes, you are welcome. You are I, welcome. I appreciate it. <laughs> and if you're near a computer and you want more information about the local ashram, mm -hmm. LifeBliss.org is a place to go, and you're visiting us. You come, yes. what, about yes. once a year to Southern uh, Yes, usually once a year. Mm. Well, welcome. It's nice mm -hmm. to have you Thank here. Thank you. <laughs> and I know you have many events, and you have a, a meditation practice Programs. that you Programs. teach people. Yes. Programs. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Is it necessary for somebody to uh, commit themselves to Hinduism, to no, no, give no, up no, all no, other... No, 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 no. It is more a commitment for the truth and the experience of spirituality than a commitment to a particular religion. Somehow, we don't believe in conversion. We are just a sanatana dharma. Means the eternal law of life. Whatever our enlightened masters understood, the, whatever secrets they understood about the life and death and law of life, they created a set of understandings, truths, and they created technology to reproduce that understanding in every being, experience in every being. See, person who creates formula to reproduce the understandings and truths of the outer world is a scientist. Person who creates formula to reproduce the understandings and experiences of the inner world is a mystic, master. So, uh, they are more like a, uh, a scientist of the inner world. They created a set of te uh, techniques, meditation techniques, a technology to reproduce the same experience which happened to them in the inner world. So this set of technology, techniques, is what we call Sanatana Dharma. The eternal law of uh, life, law, eternal law. So whoever is an interested to experiment with those technology are free, welcome to come and experiment and learn and experience whatever they want to. So there is no such thing as conversion. And still we don't have any technique or ritual to con convert people socially or legally. Because we do not believe in conversion. Traditional Sanatan Dharma, 
Vedic religion, Hinduism, does not believe in conversion. And all religion which came out of Hinduism, Buddhism or Jainism, Sikhism, they don't believe in conversion. Yeah. Uh, we believe in transformation, not conversion. Uh, okay, very good. <laughs> Never thought of it quite that way. Hindus, mm -hmm. so old, mm -hmm. uh, so old. Uh, are there particular prophets or teachers? No, we can't say there's only one prophet. There are a group of enlightened masters who did, you see, uh, there are a group of enlightened masters who did research and development collectively, like a NASA. You see, the group of scientists complementing each other and creating a proper system. How they, uh, that is the way, in a place called Naimisharanyam in India, there were thousands of enlightened beings who sat and did research for quite a long time and did big research and development and created the technology to reproduce the experience to every human beings. They created technology and techniques for all possible human minds. They did not leave a single kind of a human being. They created techniques for all kinds of beings. So I can say it is not founded by one person it is founded by a group of people and not only that, they gave freedom for the next generation to update itself. Oh, good. good. That's the main thing. New edition. There is no uh, 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 master who says, I am the last, I am the only one. No. Well, we hear about the, the Upanishads. And the uh, yes. You see, one thing. What are these uh, books? Uh, Upanishads are the solid, basic experiences of enlightened masters and there are books called Puranas and Smriti that is the technology to experience the same space in which masters are living. Masters are experienced. Upanishads and Puranas are like a basic science and the Smriti uh, Smriti is, uh, is what we call applied science. <laughs> applied science. Applied science. So if you start practicing what is mentioned in Smritis and Puranas. You will experience the state of what is uh, described in Upanishads and Vedas. So okay. one more thing. Religion should not be a, uh, just by accidental birth. Every individual should be given a fair and clear idea about all religions. And they should be given freedom to choose their own religion after they become much major. Once they are major, maybe uh, you don't even have to wait till the 18, maybe till after 12 or 14, they should be given the fair, true knowledge of all religions from the original sources and traditions and should be given freedom to choose. It should not be just because they are born in that religion. Each one should be given a uh, choice. I think we are after all a, uh, now a rich culture. We have uh, we go for, for anything and everything. We have so many choices. Why only religion should be forced? When you can have choices in your clothes, in your food, in your house, in everything. Why religion should be forced? And it's such an important thing. Religion is like an inner software based on which you are going to take major decisions. <laughs> and why should it be forced? Why should it not uh, have a choice? We should have all the softwares in front of us and a clear basic introduction from the original sources and the traditions and given a choice to use any software you want. It appeals. Sometimes mystics mm -hmm. of all traditions mm -hmm. are criticized mm -hmm. or other philosophers mm -hmm. are criticized mm -hmm. by those who say, well, then you're just believing whatever you want to believe mm -hmm. and ignoring the mm -hmm. great traditions and the wisdom mm -hmm. Of, of previous ages, um, and I have my own answer to that, mm -hmm. but what do you say about the inner light, about when wisdom arrives mm -hmm. as awareness, mm -hmm. and it's not just an idea, mm -hmm. it's, it's a comfort, solid experience, solid truth. A confirmation, a knowing comes mm -hmm. with it. Yes, and there is no doubt left. One thing, Philosophers being criticized, crucified, stoned, poisoned is an age-old tradition. Genius is a person who is intelligent enough to escape from the social conditionings. 
and the difficulty is when somebody is liberate when somebody liberates himself from the social conditionings he is so beautiful so blissful so charming we can't afford to see him constantly because it creates a constant inferiority in us that is the reason philosophers and the great enlightened beings prophets and sages are stoned poisoned crucified driven out this becomes a, a regular thing i feel that uh, uh, one thing you should understand we don't know actually whether what philosophers believe is truth or so called ordinary people believe is truth we can only find out based on the scale the or we can use only one thing as a scale who is more blissful and more settled more at ease with themselves without any help from the outer world you know them by their fruits <laughs> <laughs> so only based on the fruits we need to uh, come to a conclusion whose experience is truth and who is living in the higher space who is living in the higher consciousness i always tell people i am not here to uh, prove i am god i am here to prove you are god yeah, that's nice. <laughs> it is just a science uh, uh, inner science it should be should mm -hmm. yeah and there is a consensus that mm -hmm. dedicated people mm -hmm. to spirituality mm -hmm. if not in religion mm -hmm. they, there there tends to be well sometimes it's called a perennial philosophy mm -hmm. and one more thing when you are really searching for true experience your very inner space becomes so powerful it attracts or gets attracted to a right enlightened person to to say again to attracted to the right enlightened person the right enlightened, enlightened person. person not to any uh, religious group or a cult or any other ordinary uh, sect or anything just the pure seeking is so intelligent the pure seeking has got its own intelligence you magnetize like the right magnet. nature and not only that it becomes an intelligence to go to a right master a right time and stay as long as you receive the help and move away move even away from the master when you are supposed to move to the next level masters mm. but if we could get our friends and neighbors to mm. sit quietly mm. to just stop the chatter mm. or to let go of it because to stop the noise mm -hmm. to stop the monkey mind is mm -hmm. not an effort i uh, say uh, stopping itself is not directly possible by by mind because mind is only trying to stop the mind the very process or struggle to stop will create only more commotion <laughs> you can only do one thing unclutch means neither trying to support uh, creating a thought nor trying to maintain a thought or trying to destroy a thought See, neither uh, creating, maintaining, or destroying. Just if it happens, let it happen. If it does not happen, let it not happen. And clutching means allow seeing that automatically every thought is replacing the earlier thought. Every moment the unclutching is happening in you. Unless you unclutch from the earlier thought, you can't have a new thought. You know, many of my early meditations mm -hmm. when I was young mm -hmm. were. and still i often use visualization mm. i can say even visualization becomes one more thought yes i know so i know uh, you can just uh, my calls were not so spiritual mm -hmm. though they were so, more um oh practical mm -hmm. in terms of helping me mm -hmm. in this world but i i then did become a did begin a practice of simply watching my breath mm. that's beautiful at the bottom mm -hmm. of my nose that's beautiful and something that, uh, strange began to happen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. within just a matter of a couple of weeks i began to feel like the body i was watching breathe mm -hmm. it was almost as if it was someone else's body <laughs> and i was the watcher the witness yes the witness and then i thought oh this is why the teachers teach us this because if i can watch my body from a point of view of being other than not really other than but you know more than uh perhaps i can watch my feelings mm. and my thoughts mm. then you realize that you are beyond body and mind so more see, than uh, uh, more not than, other than more than now uh, we can't say you are not body and mind you are more than body and yeah. mind <laughs>
Tell me about the difference between uh, Atman and Brahman. See, the, these two were, all these words are more like a branding. Yeah. To tell you honestly. I should not be concerned. Uh, trademark. You see, uh, some masters use the word Atman itself to s explain about Brahman. And some masters use the word Brahman to explain Atman. No wonder. Yes. <laughs> Atman is something like an individual soul, you may say. And Brahman is like a cosmic soul. But according to me, from my experience, the when you really go deep into the individual soul, you merge into the cosmic soul. There is no boundary. There is no watertight compartment separation or a separate thing. So, these are just only the more of a uh, branding. I see. Mm. So, we shouldn't be concerned with... Yeah, too much about these words. A rigid... we, should be, uh, we should be really concerned about the technique or a technology which will lead us to that experience. Okay, let me, let me go right to the, mm. the big question. Yes. Mm. Why would God, the Absolute, mm -hmm. the Creator, mm -hmm. the Most Divine, mm -hmm. all-knowing, all-powerful, mm -hmm. everywhere equally present, mm -hmm. create a physical universe? To tell you, you want an honest answer? Your best answer, of course. I don't know. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> because... What's your best uh, answer? You what because... The logic from which this question is asked and the uh, uh, space in which the answer exists, these two are totally different plane. So you are asking the question based on the logic which you are having. But the answer from whom it's supposed to come, for him, the space in which he stays is beyond your logic. So even if the answer is downloaded to your, your logic, it will be only distorted version are half answer, which is more dangerous than lie. See, so understand. If, for example, a ant, a small ant is asking an elephant, why, why are you also black and I am also black? Why did God paint you in black? Will the elephant answer? No. Elephant will not even know that the ant is asking this question. So the uh, very space from which question comes is totally different and the space to which the question is sent is totally different so answer cannot be according to our logic and anybody who tries to answer this question will create a new philosophy not religion then mm. it really comes down to self-realization mm -hmm. that's all and honoring our mm -hmm. uniqueness at the same that's time all. we mm -hmm. feel like we are part of the one one more thing uh, uh, these uh, Two big questions. If you try to cover it, catch it with our simple logic, we only miss and mess the whole life. Because the brain really is designed to work in Your, our brain space. is our brain is hardwired to experience the cosmic consciousness, but not to logically understand the cosmic uh, consciousness. Mm. We are hardwired for enlightenment, not for logical understanding. It's like a filter, mm. more like a filter, <laughs> keep us focused here and there. And moreover, our logic is too poor. Mm. Mm. It can't grasp whatever is really happening.